What's up, people? Perry here with episode 14, and we are here in our little our little survival area. It's been a while since we've been here, uh, but for this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to start a new project today. The idea is that um, I've, I've wanted to get a bunch of projects underway all at the same time, just to provide you with a little bit more variety in terms of content, and plus for me, um, I usually end up doing this anyways because, you know, one of the, the good things about designing is that you can step away from something and then come back to it and kind of get a fresh look at it. So that's what we're going to do. But we're here in our little survival area to kind of say hi to Buck. Hey, Buck. But if you notice, and I'm pretty sure I did this, um, he was tied to the lead over here. Uh, tied by a lead over here and for some reason he got loose and I don't know why if you know why um, please let me know in the comments because uh, I'm gonna be starting a survival series soon and I would really like to know why that happened so that it doesn't happen when I'm playing survival because I would really like to not lose my horse um, but a little bit on that I have um, seen your comments I have read all of them uh, I've responded to a few and you know what I think we're gonna come up with something that uh, that'll work out just great work out just fine and you know the the idea behind the series is all about showing you guys uh, just what you can do with the limited resources that you get in survival not like what I do here in uh, creative uh, on these larger scale builds um, and also to show you some some smaller scale builds as well but what we're going to do in this episode uh, to get underway with our new project, um, I'm going to jet over there and I'll see you in just a bit. And just one more thing before we get underway here. Uh, Faleron, my buddy Fal, uh, his Adventures of the Traveling Mage series is going on right now. And the next episode is out the episode where I did a little bit of a voiceover for him. Um, so go check it out. He has a little interactive element where you can kind of choose his next path. So I'll leave a link down in the uh, description below. Uh, show him some love and make sure you leave a comment for him. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, make sure you check it out. I know, I know, I keep on saying that I'm going to get to the new build, but uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this build right here and oftentimes when I'm trying to build something I try to build uh, in, in sort of like a real world scale so anytime I'm building something I usually have something to compare it against and as you can see here um, this build is kind of modeled or mirrored after the uh, Palace of Versailles and one of the ways you know, I try to figure out these things. I, I look up on, you know, like Wikipedia and stuff, just like the d dimensions of any, um, the, of any build. Um, and for the Palace of Versailles, um, it's kind of hard to get the actual, the actual height of, uh, like the facade here. Um, but the Hall of Mirrors, they've measured it and it's about 13, 13 meters in height. And from so so if you picture if if the hollow mirrors was in here, um, like for, for instance from here down to here, uh, it should be about thirteen meters. But these windows and I think this floor itself, this first floor itself, will be about fourteen to fifteen meters. So it's kind of comparable to the hollow mirrors, but not quite. Um, but that that's just something to keep in mind when when you're building. It's always good to you know. If you want that realism into a build, it's always good to compare it to something in the real life. And here we are at our new location of our build. The thing that I'm going to be doing today is hollowing out this interior. Now you're probably wondering why is there this big chunk of red wool here? Well, I've kind of got things a little bit uh, set up here and the idea behind this red wool is all about MC Edit. Um, and so this will help me into hollowing out this entire area. And if you know anything about MC Edit, one of the things about it is that, you know, when whenever you go to selecting things and deleting them, you can only select really in, in square shapes. 
and it's not really something that uh, will help me out when I'm dealing with a big uh, circular area like this. So this is a little technique that I like to use and it's probably one of the most powerful tools in MC Edit for me at least uh, when I'm using it. It helps me to really speed up the build process and it's a little something called masking. Now you know how when you're painting something you tend to if you don't want to paint over something you you add in some tape somewhere like you, you make a line and then so that when you when you paint and then take the tape off you don't have that uh, area painted over but uh, in our case here it's kind of like a reverse thing so you think of this uh, red wool kind of like tape or this is an area that I want to delete so what I have here is the area like I've you know gone through MC Edit, and I know that you guys are asking for a tutorial on it and as soon as I can wrap my head around exactly how I do what I do I will I will get that to you guys as soon as possible but uh, what I've made here is this little I think this height from here to here it goes all the way down to the start of bedrock and what I'm gonna end up doing is that in MC Edit, I'll select this entire area here and using something called the um, clone tool I will clone this and then I will lower it into here now you're saying what's the good in that well there's a little thing called the I'm trying to remember off the top of my head uh, what it's called exactly it's the select and delete tool so basically what you can do is you can select a specific block and then you can end up deleting it so in our case because I have red wool here um, it's pretty unique to this area uh, once I lower it into here right so you got a big basin full of red wool uh, in MC edit I can take I can select that block exclusively and I can tell MC edit to go ahead find this red wool block and anytime you find this red wool block you can replace it with something and in our case what we want to do is we want to replace it with air and so when that's all said and done uh, when all the the red blocks are gone guess what we get a big hole and that's what I'm going for and so why why make the big hole well this all comes down to I've talked about this before it comes down to Doc m 77s new world tour um, if you don't know what it is I'll leave a link in the description I'm pretty sure most of you have seen it if you're a mind cracker uh, you've seen his series before and it's a real cool series and you should really check it out again I'll put a link down in the description but in that in that series basically he had a little perimeter and in it he filled it with all his redstone contraptions and all his you know um, all his living amenities and stuff like that and so I'm going to try and replicate that in my own little special way and you know try to create it on a larger scale um, so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and start doing it it looks kind of like a spaceship right now <laughs> but you, you know that movie Independence Day kind of looks like that only if it was black if it was black yeah it would look a lot better but um, I'm going to go ahead and do that I'm going to I'm going to go through an MC edit and you know take all this stuff out and I'll see you in just a bit. And just like that it's all gone. All of it's gone. And it probably took me about I have to say about 2 or 3 minutes in order to select the whole thing, drop it down into here and then just get rid of all of it. Now, the best part for me is kind of exploring all the different areas that uh, have been cut away by this um, you know it's kind of one of those hack and slash things so it's always kind of cool to see like the little caves like you see here uh, some exposed diamond that I'll never get <laughs> like right there and all the neat little that's a what are they called where are the, what are those things called again crevices crevasses um, yeah, it's always, always always very cool to see. Check that out. Um, you can see the 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 realism that I'm going for here. Um, I've extended the the pillars all the way down to here, all the way down to bedrock, and it it just helps me when I'm building things or if there's something underneath 
uh, this thing that I want to build kind of helps to have that thing in the way. Adds, uh, again, a little bit of realism to the build. Uh, what's this? Oh, it's a spawner. What kind? It's a zombie spawner. Nice. It's in here. Name tag, music disc, iron ingot. Cool. Uh, again, all stuff that I probably will never get because uh, I'll end up editing over it anyways. But uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go off into the planning world and start planning out this area because I don't want to just start, you know, building right away. Uh, I want to get a plan going and I'm going to take you along with me uh, to go figure that out. So away we go. I'll see you there in just a bit. And so here we are in our little planning world and I've made a little mock-up of the... Actually, I haven't told you the name of this. This area, this whole this whole ring thing here, um, it's called the Oasis Project. It was a little nickname that I thought up for it. Um, if you think about it, the way Dockham had his world set up, he kind of had all his gathering and all his redstone contraptions all in one place. And it was kind of like an oasis, just like in the desert, how, you know, it's it's kind of like an area of refuge. So that's that's what that's the nickname of this place. It's called the Oasis. And so what we're going to do now is we need to come up with a plan, a plan of action to uh, fill in this area. You can tell it's again, it's one quarter size of the actual um, area. But the thing that I want to do here. Is I want to come up with some sort of theme. Now, for, for the most part, the builds that you've seen me do are more on the classical side. So the uh, Baroque theme. Uh, the Oasis project here is kind of in that French Baroque theme. Same with the palace. Uh, I don't think you've really seen me do anything modern. But for a change, I thought we'd uh, mix things up. Go with a little bit of a modern build because this area is kind of important. It's kind of an area of importance, and one of the ways that you could change or, or get, get attention to something, draw attention to something, is being able to change up the styles. And one of the things that I like to do is incorporating futuristic tones into classical themes, and I usually um, get met with a little bit of hesitation or, you know, people tend to not like those sort of things. But I'm going to give it a try here. Um, we're going to see what we can come up with. But what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is a little something here that kind of cascades down from either side. And there's a purpose to that. And I'll tell you about that in just a minute. Um, and then also in the middle here, we're going to come up with a little pattern to kind of support the, um, the, the, the ring that we're going to create here. So I'm going to get things started and I'll see you in just a bit. And maybe now you can get a little sense of what I was rambling on about, um, actions speak louder than words, right? So what I have here is this little glass setup and it kind of cascades down towards the middle here. And I got this orange wool here just to kind of give you a little bit of feel as to what I'm trying to go for. So something like that. And what I'm thinking that this is going to be. Now, this entire area here will be filled with water. And what will end up happening is that I would hope that this would turn into some sort of squid farm. So the squids would move along as they normally do and... Um, hopefully they'll get caught in by the current and slowly move closer and closer towards the middle. Uh, whether or not that actually works, I don't know. Um, it has worked in the past when uh, mobs were behaving, behaving differently. I was trying to say two things at the same time there. But um, yeah, the idea is that the hopefully the squids will be able to cascade down to the bottom here and then there'll be some sort of collection area. Like I said, whether or not this works, I don't know. Um, but, you know, it's something that uh, will work in the background. So, you know, if I get some, one or two, that's great. Um, if I got a lot, then that's great too. But, you know, it's just something, it's more for looks than anything. But, uh, yeah. Uh, so the next thing that I want to do is to kind of get a support structure going on for this. 
Now, again, we're doing the modern build here, so I'm thinking some sort of honeycomb type thing. So thinking like a like a worker bee, um, just like how the uh, the worker bee kind of goes and and does its work. This is gonna be like kind of like a work area for me. So I thought maybe honeycombs would be a good way to go, uh, kind of like my own interpretation of it. A very modern interpretation of it, I guess you could say. But uh, I got to work out a honeycomb pattern. Now, this might be a little bit difficult, but I'm going to try it out. Um, bear with me. But while I'm doing that, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the whole Microsoft buying Mojang thing. And, you know, I've, you know, kind of kept up to date on everything um, that's been going on with Minecraft. Uh, I'm always looking on the Minecraft forums on all the different news items. And when this whole news thing broke about uh, Microsoft buying Mojang, I was, um, I was, a, I was a, a little bit taken aback to it. <clears throat> uh, I didn't think that they would go ahead and do it, but you know what? They, they got to do what they got to do. Um, but I'm going to tell you something from personal experience. Um, in the in the big business world, whenever you're um, buying companies or sp spending $2.5 billion, the last thing that you want to do is piss off the people that, you know, uh, made made that thing as uh, worthwhile as to pay $2.5 billion for. So um, one of the big rules in big business is don't spend 2.5 billion dollars if you don't think you can make 2.5 billion dollars back um, and I don't think that Microsoft is going to be doing anything to you know piss you guys off or you know do anything to change the structure or the way Mojang is being run because you know they started off as an indie company I just screwed up majorly there they started off as an indie company and it was something that um, I just made a circle. Hang on a second. I just made a circle. Oh, an oval. I made an oval. Oh, man. But the thing about this, the thing about Microsoft by Mojang is that, you know what? They're they're not going to alienate the the core audience, the, the core people that bought this game. So if you're thinking that there's going to be DLCs on top of DLCs and they're going to start charging for extra this or extra that, I wouldn't count on it. I really wouldn't because, you know what, they don't want to mess with the good thing. If anything, they really want to learn from the whole Mojang structure about, you know, releasing games early to beta and stuff of that nature. Um, but like I said, it's it's not something that they will end up, you know, squandering. They they really don't want to squander it. So uh, look for them to tread very lightly in the next coming months um, when it comes to uh, doing these things. And then you know what? This is just from personal experience because I I do deal with uh, a lot of big businesses. And um, as as much as you think that people um are are just looking to screw the little guy it's really not the case because the little guy is what makes the big guys um popular and uh get a lot of money so um that being said you know uh think what you will um but you know for me i'm personally not that worried but what i am worried about is this whole honeycomb structure how am i gonna do this man uh yeah i'm gonna figure this out i'll be right back with you all right, and this is what I'm going for here. As you can see, I've worked out the honeycomb structure, and the idea behind this is that it's kind of a support structure for this roof line here. Uh, I know in, in Minecraft there's no physics or anything, but it kind of gives it a little bit of realism to it. But what will end up happening is that I'll extend these up to meet with the roof, and then I'll hollow out the middle um, so that... Uh, it's walkable so that you can get around much easier um, but that's something that I'll have to reserve for the next episode um, I gotta kind of work out all the details of it um, the other thing that I wanted to show you before I end off this episode uh, was this thing right here and the idea behind this uh, is the you know how the uh, 
the nether portals you can you can build them in a large size and the idea that i'm going for here is kind of a, a striking object in the middle of this area here um, usually when you have something of this scale the thing that's in the middle should you know grab your attention and that's what i'm trying to go for here so um, it'll be a giant nether, nether portal uh, it'll be somewhat of a well it will be a gold farm and the idea behind it is that it'll funnel the the zombie pigment pigment will get funneled down here to a central collecting area same thing with the squid all gets funneled down here and eventually i, I hope to put in some sort of mob farm and everything will kind of congregate in the middle here um, kind of like a central location for all your working needs when you're when you're when you're making things when you're doing whatever so that was the idea behind uh, doc m's um uh, perimeter so that's going to be it for this episode sorry about the little kind of rant about microsoft buying mojang but you know i was reading some of the comments in the minecraft forums and i thought that uh, i i just wanted to put in my two cents and you know tell everybody you know you need to chill out it's not it's not going to be that big a deal i don't think it's going to be that big a deal if anything it should be a good thing but but that's my opinion um whatever you think leave it in the comments below i love interacting with you guys um don't forget to leave a like button if you like this episode and if you're new to this channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that's it for me always remember keep your head up and I'll see you in the next one.